Would you pray with me, please, and pray for me? Father God, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you for so many things, Father. We could be here forever just thanking and praising you because you are faithful. And you are wonderful, and you are gracious, and you are more than we can expect. You always exceed our expectations. I pray you, my Father God, that you be glorified this day in every respect, and that you would be with us as we look at your word, impart it in our hearts, and be with us, O Lord this day. Be with us. Father, as you guided the Israelites out of Egypt, guide us, my Father, into the promised land. Let our eyes be kept on you during the day and during the night. For you know where we're going. And we trust you. Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Sometime in July or early August of 2004, I found myself with two major decisions to make. Both were related to each other. One was whether or not to move my family out of the church-owned house that we owned. And I have reasons for, for thinking about that. And the other one was about the future of St. David's in the Episcopal Church. Those two things worried me a great deal. And uh, I probably spent many sleepless nights just wondering about those two things. <coughs> Both scared me at the time. Whether to go ahead and purchase a house and not know what was going to happen with me and my salary and my job and so on. Would we be able to, to pay our bills? And the other one scared me because of all of you, because of the people I loved and the congregation that I love, in which I have been for 20 some years. Both things scared me. I came one morning to, to the church here and I lay right there in that place, prostrated, headlong, with my head facing the altar. With my face on the ground, I just laid there for a long time, seeking God with all my heart, with all my soul, seeking for an answer, praying for a word, praying for guidance. And the Lord spoke to me that day like I have heard Him few times in my life. I have heard the Lord, unfortunately and sadly I don't hear Him all the time. I would love to. But there have been some times in my life where I for whatever reason, the Lord has chosen to speak to me, not with audible voice, but it was His voice nevertheless, so strong and so powerful. And the words were very short. But the Lord said to me, don't be afraid. That was it. Don't be afraid. The word was so powerful and I heard it so clearly that I got up from the floor 
And I started to cry. And I started to sing a song I hadn't sung in years and years and years. And we sang it today. I will trust in you. I will not be afraid. I will trust in you. And I just started singing and I hadn't sang that song since I was in my previous church. Or maybe I sang it here at the beginning when we were just starting here. And, and we haven't sang it for a long, long time. And I, it just, the song just came over me and I started crying and crying and crying and walking all over the church and praying all over the church and just singing and singing, I will not be afraid. I will trust in you. Now, at that time, my interpretation of God's word was that we were going to win. We were going to win in our courts, and I said, the Lord told me not to be afraid because we are going to win. Well, that's not what he said. <laughs> All he said was not to be afraid. But I kept holding on to that word, and every time we went to court and we lost, I kind of go, went back to those words and said, Lord, you remember? I remember. Well, clearly my interpretation was wrong, not God. My interpretation was incorrect. But today, perhaps I understand better than ever what it means not to be afraid of anything or anyone or any circumstance, no matter what you go through. Do not be afraid. I will trust in Him every day, every time, and no matter what it is that I will go through in life. And I think that was His lesson to me. Little did I know all that we were going to go through. Little did I know we'd be here today. But I want to say to you today, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid today and I will not be afraid tomorrow. And I will never be afraid because my trust is in Almighty God. You see, faith is a funny thing. As Christians, we talk a lot about it until we need to move in faith. <laughs> until we need to use it or until it needs to use us. We say we have faith until we're confronted with something that is terrible and then we at times collapse. When you need faith, then you will know whether you actually have it. When you need faith, then you will know how strong it really is. You will know until you really need it. And you will not know how big is your faith and how strong is your faith until you have to make a commitment to it though you don't see beyond the day. I have written numbers of things in my Bibles that I've collected over the years. And I have read these things. Strong faith comes not from avoiding storms, but from weathering them. You will never know the strength of the anchor until you face the storm. Faith is not the absence of fear, but the conviction of God's presence with you and for you. Faith is not the absence of fear, but the conviction that it doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through, you are not alone. 
Almighty God is with you and for you. And yes, it may be hard. And yes, it may be difficult. But when you have faith, you know God is there. See, the Greek word for faith that we find all over the Bible is the word pistis. And it is used a lot in the scriptures in form of a noun. Like where we say the faith. The faith. Or Paul might say to Timothy, guard the faith. And what it means when we use it in a noun is that body of belief, that body of doctrines that were taught to us by Jesus Christ himself and passed on to us by the disciples after him. The gospel is the faith. And this is what we have done. And what leads us to this day today. What we have lost, we have lost in order not to lose the thing that matters the most, the faith. Whatever we lose, we must not lose the faith, the body of Christ together around the word of Almighty God. That must never be lost. Whatever else we may lose in life, guard the faith. And that's what leads us here. This congregation and some of us in other congregations have guarded the faith and have stood strong in the one faith committed to the saints. And we hold it up even if we have to go through what we have to go through. Another way in which the Bible uses the word faith is in what we call saving faith. You know, we in English don't actually have a word that translates into a, a verb for faith. What we say, for example, when we talk about saving faith, you all know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That word believes is the word for faith. Unfortunately, in English, we don't have a word that translates in a verb form for faith. So we turn it into believe. I believe. The problem with I believe is that, is that it tends to say, I believe up here. It's like a mind thing. Is what I store here. What do I know? When faith actually is about what you have here. Faith is not about head knowledge. Faith is about a heart conviction that your God is the God of the universe and there's nobody greater than Him and nobody you should trust or worship but Him. Belief is not just about learning the Word. It's about living the Word. Practicing the Word. Acting on the Word. We don't have a way to translate the verb form of business into English. But faith is a verb in, in the Bible all over the place. And verbs are actions. Verbs are about actions. It's about acting in faith. Acting in faith. To truly have faith, you must act in faith. You must live in faith. You must have faith. You must face tomorrow in faith. You must face your struggles of life in faith. Faith becomes active and not passive when you truly understand and put it in your heart. Faith is what moves mountains. 
It moves mountains not because of the strength of your faith, but in whom your faith is placed. Amen? Amen. See, faith has little to do with me. It has all to do with Him in whom I place my faith. It has all to do with Him. I'm just another human being in this world, but He is beyond anything this world has ever known or will ever know. He is our God and our Father. Faith is what leads us to trust God in the midst of the impossible and the hard and the risky. And as Jesus said to Martha, you remember, it's a favorite passage of mine, you remember when Jesus came to resurrect Lazarus. And Martha came running to him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he went over to the tomb and he called out Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And the impossible became possible. And then Jesus turned to Martha and he said these words. Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? And I think those words are for you and for me today. If you believe in all, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, if you truly believe, you will see God act in your behalf and lead you through the difficult times and the hard times and the joyous times and the blessed times and you will know the Lord your God in ways that you've never known Him by not going through the trials. If you believe, you will see, not you might see, but you will see the glory of God. I found this in my Bible as I was reading through the book of Hebrews for today. I have written down, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. And then someplace else I found faith is to see now what by God's grace you will touch later. Faith is to see now with the eye of the Spirit by the promise of God what one day will touch and live into reality. Faith, faith is what moves mountains. Faith is what helps us dream the impossible, challenge ourselves to attain what is invisible, and faith pleases God because we trust Him above all things. You know, Hebrews 11 gives us a very limited, really truly a very limited list of individuals. What we call the heroes of the faith. Chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, which was read today who have acted in their lives by faith. At times leaving all things behind, at times risking their own lives, at times going in directions where they could not see what lay ahead of them. But who trusted that God would be there with them and for them. In fact, these words are repeated in the 11th chapter of Hebrews over and over again. By faith. By faith we know that the creation was created by the power of the Word of God. By faith Abel brought a worship that
that was acceptable to God. By faith, Enoch pleased God and believed in him. By faith, Noah was criticized, ridiculed, made fun of, ostracized perhaps in his community, but by faith, he was obedient and built the ark. By faith, Abraham listened to a voice he had never heard before. Because he wasn't a Jew and he wasn't a Christian. He was actually probably a pagan. And he heard the voice of God and God said, Come, follow me. And I will take you to a land you've never seen. And in order for some time for Abraham to move to what God had promised, he had to turn his back on all that lay behind. He had to leave family and land. He had to leave a house. He had to leave all kinds of things in order to be obedient to Almighty God. And God led him to a place he had never seen with a promise he had never heard. I will make out of you a nation. Even when he felt he, had, he would not have a, a, an heir, God said, you will have an heir. In fact, you will have more heirs than you can count. But in order to see what's ahead, you have to turn your back on what's behind. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. She knew she couldn't have children anymore. She knew she was an old woman. She knew it wasn't part of nature that she would conceive. By faith, she conceived. By faith, she had her child. By faith, begun the lineage of Abraham that multiplied and multiplied through the nations. By faith. By faith, I see, believing the promise that God had made to his father. By faith, Jacob believed the promise that God had made to his grandfather. By faith, Joseph believed in the promise that he had, had been given to Abraham. And by faith, Moses, by faith, Moses believed in a God that appeared to him in a burning bush. That spoke to him and he tried to say, no, not me, send somebody else. And he said, no, it's you. He had to trust God by faith. By faith, he faced the enemy. By faith, he led the people. By faith, he even led those that spoke against him. By faith, he moved forward to a place he had never seen himself. By faith. And then chapter 11 continues and continues and continues. By faith, Jericho fell. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, believed. By faith, Gideon. By faith, Barak. By faith, Samson. By faith, Japheth. By faith, David. By faith, Samuel. By faith, the prophets. And it continued and continued. By faith, some faced lions. By faith, some gave their life. And you just need to keep reading the whole chapter. By faith, men of God have done the impossible and risked everything. And today, they are the heroes of Almighty God. And we celebrate them. Because by faith, they believe. By faith, they surrender. By faith, they follow. And by faith, they give themselves. By faith. By faith, this world and this society is what it is today because of the faith of so many, so many pastors, so many men and women of God who have preached the word throughout generations. By faith, the impossible has become possible. Hebrews 11, 1 describes faith in, in the only way that can be described. Faith is the substance, the tangible substance, the image. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Hope for means that you haven't seen it. Because hope that is seen 
is not hope, it is reality. But hope that is unseen requires faith. Faith is the assurance of what you don't yet see. It is the conviction of things not seen. It's the best description there is of faith. The assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And then verse 6 says something that we ought to engrave in our minds and hearts. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You hear me? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It also tells us what we must believe. It tells us, first of all, that we must believe that He is. That He exists. That He's everything He claims to be. That He's powerful. That He's almighty. And that He loves you to death. And He's for you and with you no matter what you go through. Without that kind of faith, it is impossible to please God. You must believe that He is. And you must believe that He's the rewarder of those who seek Him with all their heart. Today. Today, we go in faith and by faith. Today you are called by Almighty God to trust Him though we don't know tomorrow or the next day or the next year or two years from now. I just have the assurance, folks, that God is with us and for us. And nothing will stop this congregation from serving God anywhere that we are placed. You today, whether you're part of this church or not, you are being challenged by God today to act and live by faith. Not by your control, not by your power, but submitting it all to Almighty God that He leads and you follow. Today, you and I are called to faith. To faith. Let me ask you this. What will be written of you one day? In the list of heaven, in the futures of this earth, will they say, by faith, Jose. By faith, Wanda. By faith, Alice. By faith, what will be said of you in the eyes of Almighty God? by faith. I pray that what is written about St. Davis is that St. Davis was willing by faith to lose it all, to put it all behind so that we can follow but one God, the Almighty, the triune God. What will be said of the testimony of this church in the future? It is in your hands and my hands. By faith, St. David. By faith, St. David trusted God. By faith, St. David did not look back but looked forward. By faith, St. David built something in the future that they had no idea they were going to build. By faith, St. David reached people that they had no idea they were going to reach. By faith, what will be said about this church? I pray and I believe because I know you. By faith, we will be a testimony of the saints wherever the name of our church is heard or written about. By faith. 
Not because we are better or bigger or stronger, but because our God is Almighty. Because there's not another one like Him. Because He has a plan that though we don't know it yet, He's taking us there. And I, for one, will follow the steps of Jesus wherever He leads. Amen? Amen. By faith. I'm going to, to ask us all for a quiet, a moment of quiet. And I'm going to lead you in prayer. We're going to bypass a few things that we normally do in an Anglican service so that we can dedicate ample time for prayer. And what I want to ask you to do is I want you to pray. I want you to pray out loud. I want you to pray what's in your heart. I don't want you to preach. I want you to pray. I want you to talk to God what's in your heart. I want to give you a moment and a venue for you to express to God how you are today and where you are today. This last, this last month in Sunday school, we have been learning about the stories of Moses. Through our lessons, we have learned how God protected Moses and later used him in his great plan to free the Israelites. Through he, he, our years here at St. David's, we have come to know God's great love for us and his protection in our lives. We have learned about the struggles many of God's people went through and how each and every time he led, through, he led them through to the happier times. We must remember that God always has a plan for us and it is better to, than any plan we could have come up with on our own. Moses and the Israelites sacrificed many things and walked away from a life. They knew in order to follow God. Now it is our turn to do, to the same. New is sometimes scary, and we know that as children we don't fully understand what is happening. Our teachers have spent some time preparing us for this move and getting us excited for this next adventure. Although we are sad about leaving our church building, we are also excited about exploring our new church and making new memories. We want to thank you all for working so hard to make sure we have a church to call home. It may not be in the same building, but it will still be St. David's. Please continue to pray for us in God's presence in our lives.